What's up guys, More Medic one here, and today I want to talk about ignition modules just a little bit, and we're going to test this one, and we're going to use the steel uh, factory tester and for what to do when you have zero spark. Today's specimen on the bench is a steel 4180 series four cycle uh, engine. This is their four mix engine, and as you can tell, I've already taken it off of the... Uh, the trimmer portion, but this is a perfect example of a failed ignition module, coil, whatever you want to call it. The tester that I'm going to be using is called the ZAT4. As you can tell, this one is from steel. And what this actually does is it's a lighted spark tester. However, it's got some little doohickeys inside that uh, creates a uh, more resistance and loads the coil. So I'm going to spin this motor over and watch right here in this glass window. You should see a red uh, a red light flash or orange, depending on the strength of the spark. And let's just see. And as you can tell, we have zero spark. Now, a couple things can happen. You can actually have the coil fail. Uh, the windings inside will break down over time, vibration and heat cycle. The windings inside the coil are actually, they have a, uh, a insulated coating on the wire. And that can, you know, over time rub together and wear off. And then when the two wires touch it shorts the coil out and it won't fire that's how they normally fail now there are some electronic components in here that are not serviceable that can fail as well like rev limiters and things like that now on handheld equipment like trimmers and chainsaws and such you can have the switch go bad and let me show you how to quickly rule this out with a digital voltmeter or you can just use a continuity tester whatever you have and it doesn't matter what side of the terminals you put your leads on what you want to do is that you want to watch the meter you want to put your meter on uh, continuity and right now it's in the on it's in the on position so when I turn this switch to off your meter should read zero and it does turn the switch back on I'm gonna turn it off the switch and the wiring harness to the coil is good Okay, we've ruled out the ignition switch. We've ruled out the uh, wiring harness. So without a shadow of a doubt, we can rule out anything else except for the coil being bad under one other circumstance. And I'll post the link below. I did a, a, a video about a coil that would not fire. And the only thing that was keeping it from firing was the coil was actually corroded in between the coil and the engine block. And I cleaned the surfaces up where the coil mounts and it went to firing. And before you go and condemn a coil, I highly suggest taking the coil off, sand where the coil mounts on the engine block and the uh, both sides where the screw attaches and just make sure absolutely with without a shadow of a doubt that you have a good solid mounted coil that with no corrosion because if there's any corrosion in there it it does something to the magnetic flux lines and it just won't work all right so we're going to replace this coil it's just two t27 screws but be careful there are some plastic phenolic spacers that go behind this coil to space it out so that it lines up with the magnets on the flywheel. 
So be careful and don't lose those. And let me, I'll show you here in just a second. One may fall out here. But I, if I'm not mistaken, the new coil comes with new spacers if you happen to lose one. Oops, see there? It fell Matter out. Fact, oh, here's the other one. I would just go ahead and replace these because they get a little bit of a squish built into them after you've tighten the coil down so just I would just discard them but you don't want to leave them in the here because they can get caught up in between uh, in the fan and whatnot if you have a steel four mix engine it's the, like I said it's the 4180 series this is the part number for the new coil well, it does come with new spacers so we'll install those let's see and it comes with a little TT sheet or tells you about the where to mount it and uh, how to mount it and the gap that it needs to have in between. But that's pretty much it. I'm going to take me just a small little piece of Scotch Brite and I'm going to scuff up and polish up where the coil mounts on the engine block you don't have to go crazy with this just get it clean and corrosion free we're going to lay our little spacers right where they where they go and then we're going to mount the coil Just like so. Making sure the spacers are in there. Let's go ahead and install one screw. And just barely get that screw started. Get your grounding tab for this screw here. And then we'll cinch down this screw here. I'm going to push the coil all the way towards the top of the engine. And now we're going to find the magnet and we're going to put that magnet right under the legs of the coil. Just like that. And now we're going to slide us a business card right underneath this coil. And then we're going to loosen the screws and let that coil drop down onto the flywheel. Keep it just a little tappy tap and then go ahead and send the screws on home. Like I said, don't have to kill them, just get them cinched down. I'm sure there's a torque spec on that, but just use common sense here. Now just remove the paper and then your gap is set. I'm going to spin the motor over, and as you can tell, we got good hot spark now. I'm going to install a new CMR6H.
Alrighty guys, hey, we got this engine mounted back onto the uh, the trimmer portion. We've got our kill leads hooked up. Let's just see if it's going to start. She runs good. <laughs> Guys, the last thing that you can do is a quick and dirty, what we call a uh, uh, diagnostic in a bottle. We take a little bit of brake clean or some carb spray. Or even just a little bit of and, uh, mixed gas and dribble it and straight into the uh, the carburetor here. And if you pull it and it doesn't fire off on the fuel that you have had that you have introduced into the engine, then you could possibly you know be checking a coil in that nature. Most of the time, it's just going to be a you know a spark plug. But hey. If this content helped you out, and I know it did on this video, give me a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. And while you're there doing that, go ahead and click that bell so that you get all my new videos. Y'all have a good rest of your day. More Medic One.